This morning, President Trump retweeted a series of three anti-slam videos from Jada Franson, the deputy leader of the fair and ultra-nationalist UK political party Britain First. The titles of the videos Muslim migrant beats up Dutch boy on crutches, Muslim destroys a statue of Virgin Mary, Islamist mob pushes teenage boy off roof and beats him to death. Go deeper Franson has said British police should be able to shoot Muslims, according to this Huffington Post story. The big picture Lauer is the latest in a string of media men accused of UAL harassment in recent weeks. The instant fallout co-anchor Savannah Guthrie said at the top of today, reading Lack's statement and saying she had just learned the news this is a sad morning, we are devastated. We are still processing this. Choking up, Guthrie said that as painful as the process is, this reckoning in workplaces is long overdue. We promise to be transparent, she told viewers, promising to continue covering the story. Trump tweeted within 20 minutes of the story breaking Wow, Matt Lauer was just fired from NBC for inappropriate UAL behavior in the workplace. But when will the top executives at NBC, Comcast be fired for putting out so much fake news? Check out Andy Lack's past here is the text from Andy Lack's email to staff on Monday night. We received a detailed complaint from a colleague about inappropriate UAL behavior in the workplace by Matt Lauer. It represented, after serious review, a clear violation of our company's standards. As a result, we've decided to terminate his employment. While it is the first complaint about his behavior in the over 20 years he has been at NBC News, we were also presented with reason to believe this may not have been an isolated incident. Our highest priority is to create a workplace environment where everyone feels safe and protected, and to ensure that any actions that run counter to our core values are met with consequences, no matter who the offender. We are deeply saddened by this turn of events, but we will face it together as a news organization, and do it in as transparent a manner as we can. To that end, Noah and I will be meeting with as many of you as possible throughout the day today to answer your questions. Andy Editors note NBC is an investor in Axios and Andy Lack is on the Axios board. The big picture the Supreme Court has ruled in the past that you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy for data you voluntarily turn over to a third party. In the 70s, it said police could use a pen register, a device that records all numbers called from a particular telephone line, to log the numbers a suspect dialed from his landline phone, because he knew he was routing those calls through the phone company. A similar case allowed warrantless searches of bank records. But here in 2017, almost everything we do involves transmitting data to a third party. As the ACLU put it in a brief to the High Court, every day, millions of Americans disclose their search queries to Google, their GPS coordinates and location history to Apple, Google, and Waze, their intimate photos to Apple or Flickr, and their medical queries to WebMD. The details the ACLU is representing Timothy Carpenter, who was convicted of participating in a string of robberies in 2010 and 2011, a conviction based partly on data from Carpenter's cell phone providers, which showed that his phone pinged cell towers near the sites of the robberies at the times they occurred. Police obtained nearly 13,000 individual records about the location of his cell phone, spanning four months. The ACLU says obtaining all those cell tower records without a warrant violated Carpenter Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure. The Justice Department's case is simple cell tower records are just like the bank records and pen registers of the 70s. Users don't own their cell tower records cell phone companies do. And everyone who uses a cell phone knows about cell towers. So, cell tower location records are a clean example of that it turned over to a third party, and therefore aren't entitled to any expectation of privacy. But the tech industry disagrees. More than a dozen big tech companies, including Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Twitter and Snap, as well as Verizon, filed a brief that doesn't take a side in the dispute over these particular phone records, but argues that the court's analog precedents should anti-govern modern technology. The implications the companies lay out are staggering users may not expect or intend that, by relying on service providers to administer everything from their email content and address book to their health and fitness data, they assume the risk that the government could amass and monitor their data without a warrant, the companies wrote. When an internet user opens a news story, views a photograph, or sends a message to a friend, the user's smartphone often makes a record of that action, and those records are often transmitted to third parties, they say. Similarly, smart appliances know when we're home. All told, there's almost nothing these companies, together, don't know about us. Several of the justices, both liberal and conservative, seem to share those concerns. The court ruled in 2014 that police need a warrant to physically search a suspect's cell phone, largely because of the sheer amount of information our phones store. 
and in 2011, the court said police needed a warrant to attach a GPS tracker to a suspect's car. That's different from retracing their steps through cell tower locations, but the justices were clearly thinking about some of the same issues they'll grapple with today. Justice Sonia Sotomayor said the court should reevaluate its so-called third-party doctrine, because it's ill-suited to the digital age, in which people reveal a great deal of information about themselves to third parties in the course of carrying out mundane tasks. Long-term GPS tracking required a warrant because society's expectation has been that law enforcement agents and others would not and simply could not secretly monitor and catalog every single movement of an individual's car for a very long period, Justice Samuel Alito said in the same case. A ruling is expected by June. Deplorables, as Trump originals defiantly call themselves, will love Let Trump Be Trump, it's a campaign memoir buddy picture. But journalists will also feast on it. Paul Manafort, first a Trump delegate strategist, later campaign chairman, and now under indictment, takes a beating. Manafort's purview grew after Lewandowski was fired. In April 2016, en route to a Delaware rally, Trump ordered the pilot of his personal chopper to fly lower in order to get cell service to chew out Manafort for suggesting the candidate not go on TV. Trump barked a barrage of four-letter words I know guys like you, with your hair and your skin. At one point in Iowa, Trump scolded Lewandowski you don't know what you're doing. This team is completely lost. The authors write that Steve Bannon, when he first heard Trump was running for president, laughed and said yeah, of what country? When the kids Lewandowski and Hope Hicks overnighted at Mar-a-Lago, Trump would insist they, and body man Keith Schiller, sit with him for dinner. The boss would regale them with stories about himself. His table mates back then remain a rare breed today true Trump loyalists. Pre-order here. That's all for now, more soon. But as a last sneak peek a sign of the book's perspective, here's the dedication to President Donald J. Trump and First Lady Melania Trump and the entire Trump family for making America great again. 65% believe the country is on the wrong path. 0.60% disapprove of Congress performance. 0.59% have unfavorable views of the GOP, compared to 42% with unfavorable views of the Democratic Party. Why It Matters A Pew Research report from July shows that millennial and Gen X voters made up a majority of voters in 2016, and that millennials will likely be the biggest cohort in the 2020 election. The three emotions of the moment fatigue even if the CDU and Social Democrats SPD do hitch up, most Germans won't like it. Only 39% of them favor a renewed grand coalition of this kind. Moreover, the SPD, which is at its weakest since 1949, will be at pains to show voters that it's not just a second fiddle to Merkel. This means that unwieldy intercoalition politics will hobble the Merkel's ability to act. Anger the fair alternative for Germany AFD party now holds 92 seats in parliament. And while it's in no position to be a kingmaker, the weakness of Merkel's coalition could increase the party's anti-establishment appeal, compounding her troubles. Despair French President Emmanuel Macron's bold initiative to reform and revitalize Europe requires a strong, willing Germany. Absent that, it will be harder for Europe to cope with an increasingly assertive brand of populist nationalism. Bottom line Merkel will enter her fourth term significantly weakened, and that's bad news for Germany and for Europe. Go deeper right-wing populist surge in Germany sign up for Eurasia Group Media's Signal Newsletter. Bitcoin, the best-known cryptocurrency in the world, is now worth $10,000, according to multiple price trackers. At the beginning of 2017, it was trading at one-tenth of the price. Why it matters though Bitcoin has had a loyal fan base since its inception, it's faced its fair share of skepticism over the years as well. Recently, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon called it a fraud triggering similar comments from other banking executives, so the new price milestone is notable. One anonymous Republican senator confirmed that Trump had raised the birther theory, and the White House didnt pushed back on the story. One startling line Mr. Trump's journeys into the realm of manufactured facts have been frequent enough that his own staff has sought to nudge friendly lawmakers to ask questions of Mr. Trump in meetings that will steer him toward safer terrain. Summing it up the Mr. Trump's falsehoods about the Access Hollywood tape are part of his lifelong habit of attempting to create and sell his own version of reality. Meanwhile the Washington Post reports tonight that Trump has expressed certainty that the special counsel probe into his campaign's possible collusion with Russia will be finished by the end of the year, complete with an exoneration from Robert S. Mueller III, according to several friends who have spoken with him in recent days. What to for one outside advisor to Trump warned that the president would blow a gasket if there was no statement of exoneration by year's end. Why?
It matters Uber's conceit of the letter likely spent whatever patience the presiding judge had left for the ride-hailing company. Moreover, the former employee, whose attorney drafted the letter in question, testified that Uber had a unit dedicated to gathering information and trade secrets from competitors overseas, and set up channels for untraceable communications. Still, the other employee's testimony as well as his denials of some claims in the letter also hint that this may not help Waymo's case after all. Up next, the court will be making public a redacted version of the letter tomorrow, though the former employee has submitted a request that it be kept confidential. Angela Padilla, an in-house lawyer for Uber, will also testify tomorrow about the letter.